Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, I want to talk about, and this is going to go in line with a couple of my other videos, which I am going to link in this and talk about this, but I want to talk about the concept of where, what goes on when I'm installing capacitor banks for power factor correction. So as electricians, we should know that, you know, if I install capacitor banks because of their leading reactive VARs, it's going to cancel out some of the lagging VARs some, from some of my inductive loads. Uh, electric discharge lighting, my motors, LEDs, electronics, things like that. So we do see these installations quite a bit and and it's important that we understand that how dangerous these installations can actually be, right? We're installing this device, a capacitor, which has the ability to store an electric charge, right? So if I just immediately disconnect it from a circuit, I'm now walking around with a, a device that's storing an electric charge. So there's a bunch of considerations that we need to take into place. So um, whether we're talking the theory side or the code side of it, um, all these considerations, we can reference them from section 26 in our code book, uh, talking about different uh, requirements that come in, right? So, uh, and again, we're talking Canadian electrical code here, but so that section covers things like the wire, the overcurrent, the control device. Um, it also tells us things like we require a warning sign hey, there's gonna be a capacitor in this circuit, you're the electrician, please wait a certain amount of time before working on the circuit. Now, what, why does that sign matter? What happens here? Well, when we connect up that capacitor, we require a discharge path. So if I open my motor contactor or I open the circuit, that capacitor can actually discharge through something. So there has a path for the current to flow out of the capacitor and discharge. So we call that a discharge resistor. So when we install that discharging path, it has to meet certain requirements and it has to discharge within a certain amount of time. Um, so you can check that video out if you're looking for that. Um, now some other requirements say, hey, you know what? If the capacitor is connected directly in parallel with the motor, well, now I don't need a separate discharge path because when I disconnect the motor, the capacitor can actually discharge into the motor itself. So that's a one benefit of connecting it directly up with the motor. Um, and a couple other requirements, depending where in that motor circuit you're actually connecting it. You know, is it for a motor bank? Is it for an individual motor? Or are you power factor correcting an entire uh, factory plant, institution, whatever it is? Um, so we install these capacitor banks for power factor correction usually, right, like I mentioned. Um, but we sometimes need to monitor the actual power factor that's happening. So what I mean is often, almost always in fact now, capacitor banks will have some type of monitoring system in place uh, using some type of power quality analyzer or a PLC. It'll monitor the power factor of the plant, factory, circuit, whatever it is. And then as required, as certain loads come on, It'll actually bring on and disengage and disengage capacitor banks uh, as we go through. Um, so that can work really well. So you can have a controller sitting at a station monitoring. Sometimes it can be automatic. What you may also see is you may just see contactors that are interlocked with each other. So that when, you know, this big 100 horsepower motor comes on at the exact same time, every time this capacitor bank comes on, which will correct that motor to, you know, a 0.95 or something like that. So... Those are just some considerations to think about when you're installing capacitors. Um, I've linked all the other videos below that I have, um, but I hope this helps. And remember, stay safe out there. Capacitors can be very dangerous. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped. Have a great day.